In New York City, I'm speaking with historian Lenny Brenner. He's uh, author of Zionism in the Age of the Dictators and a number of other books, and authority on Zionist dealings with fascists. We're going to talk about a new book that just come out, The Unspoken Alliance, South Africa's Secret Relationship with Israel by Sasha polakow Saransky. Good afternoon. Yes. Let's start with the most explosive charge in the book, that in 1975, when South Africa was fully racist, uh, Israeli authorities, led then by Defense Minister Shimon Peres, tried to sell South Africa missiles loaded with atomic bombs. As a historian, do you think Polakow Saransky makes his case about that? I think he does. In fact, uh, let me put it this way. Um, as soon as the book came out, uh, Shimon Peres, who is now the president of Israel, nothing less than that, um, but who was the defense minister in 1975, denounced the book for claiming that Israel offered to sell a, uh, a, a, a Jericho missile with three kind, three kinds of warheads, you know, one for gas, one for regular bombs, and one for atomic bombs. And um, uh, as, soon as, it, as soon as he made the denunciation, uh, publications like Haaretz, which are, you know, a serious Israeli newspaper, probably the best Israeli newspaper, uh, they said, why don't you shut up, Shimon? You know, this is like uh, your recent accusation against Judge Goldstone. Okay. In other words, uh, a couple of weeks before, after the Goldstone uh, UN uh, uh, charges that you know the Israelis committed war crimes in Gaza, etc., the Israeli government came out with an accusation that Goldstone had been a judge under the apartheid regime and had ordered executions of blacks, etc. And Haaretz said the same thing. Yeah, he did it, but all you're doing. Israel is attracting attention to your alliance to Israel and to South Africa. Uh, to South Africa, right? And and uh, you know my my first skepticism uh, because I don't care. You know, I mean, I'm, I I want to see Israel guilty of, of war crimes, etc., so to speak, politically. But I they got to be proved. I don't take anything for granted. You know, mm -hmm. uh, my first skepticism is if they didn't make the offer if they why did he denounce it you know in other words what why did he must have felt that he uh, didn't make that offer except that they had just made the accusation against Goldstone when it was of no profit to them all all that the accusation did was attract attention to the book okay and, and this is a kind of freakiness that's going on in uh, Zionist circles now, where they're defending themselves by accusing other people of their own crimes and stuff like that. It has, it has a, 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 a crackpot quality to it that as a movement begins to lose contact with reality, that, that kind of thing happens. And then there's all those documents that uh Exactly. Polakow, uh, Saransky said of the South Africans where th at least the South Africans thought they were talking about nuclear bombs. Well, I mean, let me put it this way. Um, he quotes so many documents and, and he went, what, what happened is this. He, his mother had to, and father had to flee South Africa. They were South African Jews. They had to flee South Africa because she was an anti-apartheid activist. Now we're talking about the author. Of the this author. Okay. So he uh, actually, I think, was born in the United States. He certainly grew up here, and he's an American citizen. And uh, then he went to uh, uh, Oxford as a Rhodes Scholar, and uh, he got the bright idea of uh, requesting documents from the South, the present South African government, the successor that defeated the apartheid South African government. Now he says it took him time to get it for bureaucratic reasons 
and they did a, a little teeny tiny bit of editing, you know. And uh, I, I would attribute that to the fact that they made a deal with, they meaning the, the apartheid government made a deal with uh, Nelson Mandela and the African National Congress in uh, 1994 where everything was for forbidden and the white South African military, for example, continued on as the generals in the new South African army, etc. So some of these guys might still be around and to, to avoid embarrassing South Africans, they edited a little bit, but they didn't edit the stuff on Israel. Okay. Uh, so there's no doubt, uh, let me put it this way, nobody's going to do another deep research of the South African files like, like him, you know, just to prove him wrong on point Z, you know, uh, when he's right on the other 25 Let's talk a little points. bit more about his credentials now. He's Jewish. He's Jewish. For some people that's very important. All right, and not only that, he's not an anti-Zionist per se, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, he denounces the, he denounced the uh, United Nations uh, uh, denunciation of Israel as uh, racist in 1975, he calls it infamous, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, the Zionism is racist. Yes, right. Equation. Now, I would even take it a step further than that. Uh, one of the things that he did was once he went through the South African files, he then went to Israel and interviewed some of the Israeli military and politicians who were involved and frankly I don't think they, as many of them would have given him interviews if he was already known as an anti-Zionist. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I, I got interviews from guys who had collaborated with the Nazis but I think that they learned something from that. In other words that you know you don't just talk to any old body etc. Uh, I would say this, I don't believe that his Zionism interfered with his digging up the details, okay? Right. I think that he doesn't quite understand some of the motivations of the different ideological tendencies within Zionism, okay? Um, for, now, he makes it very clear that the alliance with, uh, all right, the, the way he, he tells the story, and, 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 and certainly this part of it is true, is that when Israel was created in 1948, the, the then South African government was a racist colonial regime, but not the apartheid regime. That came into power a few months later than Israel was created in May of 48. That came into power after an election, I think in September or something like that, okay? Um, and at first, Israel, you know, I mean, they recognize, you know, thank you for recognizing us and we recognize you, etc. But Israel's first priority in the 50s was trying to get the support of the newly created Ghana, for example, right, which mm -hmm. had just gotten its independence, and trying to get uh, the UN vote of Ethiopia and Liberia, which were already independent. And then from then on in, step by step, one after another, African country got its independence. So what they tried to do was get their support against the Arabs. Mm -hmm. against the Palestinians and the Muslims, etc., etc. So they actually sent uh, technical teams, you know, irrigation experts, military experts, etc. Now, originally, these, in the, these newly independent uh, African countries, they saw Israel as, oh, they revolted against the British, they're like us. Yeah, okay. yeah. And of course the poor Jews in the Holocaust, etc. But what began to happen was that after the 1967 war, when Israel, Israel 
conquered not only Gaza and the West Bank, it took Sinai, okay, from Egypt. Now, the newly created Organization of African Union, all of them had to protest the idea of foreigners occupying Africa, taking over African territory, okay? So that began the critique of Israel by the African governments. And after that, they sort of split into two camps. The ones who said, hey, Israel is a colonial country, let's not kid ourselves. And some of them who said, we don't care, they got stuff to give us, you know, okay. And what began to happen was that some of these uh, countries like uh, Uganda with Idi Amin and so on and so forth, um, the Israelis began to provide like the palace guards, if you know what I mean, you know, the, the, the train the military of the, of, the, of the new despotisms and so on and so forth. Now, the, the, um, uh, the Africans, what they, you know, they knew they, they needed technology, you know, and they didn't want to get it, of course, from Britain and France, okay, and they didn't really want to get it from America, which was tied in, you know, to NATO with Britain and France. So, okay, Israel is still, it's a colonial country, but it's not Britain and France, it's not America. So, you know, we'll, 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 we'll do a deal with them. Because but that, that was, began, as I say, in effect, a um, Egyptian semi-victory, if you know what I mean. And it, it picked up the, the anti-colonialism uh, of, of, of the Africans. So it's in the, in the 70s that the right. Israel-South Africa relationship... Really uh, begins, right. Now, now the book, I haven't read the book, I understand it opens up with uh, Prime Minister Foster walking to Yad Vashem and, uh, and, uh, in 1976. Yes, okay. In the opening image. All right. Now, in other words, uh, it, it, the, the actual, you know, the secret stuff began 73, 74, etc. But by 76, Worcester literally appeared at the Wailing Wall, okay, and then he went to the Yad Vashem. Now, what was shocking, more than anything else, was him going to the Yad Vashem because Worcester had been pro-Nazi during World War II. See, the, the Afrikaners had been conquered by the British, okay? So uh, they always felt, uh, hey, this country is really ours. We conquered the natives. You get the hell out of here, Britain. So when Britain went to war against Germany, a lot of Afrikaners supported Germany against their own government, okay? So the idea of Israel bringing Worcester to uh, uh, Yad Vashem, Yad Vashem was shocking even to Zionist Jews in South Africa because they knew that about their own government, etc. Um, now, what's important about that is that this was in broad daylight. In other words, when he talks about the unspoken, when uh, uh, Apolikov Sharansky talks about uh, the unspoken alliance, what he means is the secret aspects of the alliance. Uh, they literally signed an agreement that everything that they wrote was to be kept secret and that neither one of them had the right to break the treaty. Okay, that, you know, in other words, this is hush up, hush, hush up. Now, the extent of the actual relations were enormous.